All right, here is the first of three homework solution videos for topic 1.06. So in this one, the first homework assignment is questions one through four from section 4.5 of the textbook. These questions start on page 258. So we have to state the non-permissible values and then solve each rational equation. So let's start with 1a, 1 over x plus 1 over 3x equals 1 over 6. So first and foremost, the non-permissible values are any place you'd be dividing by 0. So that's when either x equals 0 or 3x equals 0. In this case, we have non-permissible values for our 1 plus our 1 over x plus 1 over 3x equals 1 over 6 x is not allowed to be 0. That is the point in which these become 0. So in our next step to actually solve for x, we start by putting the left over a common denominator, which we can do by simply multiplying the left by 3 over 3. So this leads us to 4 over 3x equals 1 over 6. As long as x is not 0, we can multiply by it. That gives us 24 equals 3x, or x equals 8. Checking 1 over 8 plus 1 over 24. Or a common factor of 24, that's 3 plus 1 over 24. And 4 over 24 does indeed reduce to 1 over 6. So x equals 8 is our solution, where x not equal to 0 is our non-permissible value. 1b is 1 over x minus 1 over x plus 1 equals 1 over 6. Now, in this case, we have two non-permissible values. Our first denominator says x cannot be 0. Our second denominator says x plus 1 cannot be 0, which means x cannot be negative 1. So 0 and negative 1 are the values we are not allowed to have. Now again, we put our left-hand side over a common denominator. That means multiplying the left by x plus 1 and the right by x over x. So that's 1 over x times x plus 1 equals 1 over 6. So cross multiplication gets us 6 equals to x times x plus 1. Now we could either multiply this out solve our quadratic and figure out what these are. The, or we could try to do it by inspection and say two consecutive integral factors that multiply out to six would be two and three. Either way, we are going to have one solution for x equals two and another for x equals negative three. Jumping to the factors means often forgetting that we have the negative solutions as well. So 2 and negative 3 are the solutions, and 0 and negative 1 are the non-permissible values. Sorry if I scrolled quickly, but you can always pause the YouTube video. And I see now I read that wrong. That one up above was 1c. I was expecting them to go across, they went down. 1b is 2y minus 6 for 4y minus 8 equals 1. The only non-permissible value here is the one that makes the denominator equal to 0, which is y not equal to 2. We get by saying 4y minus 8 is not equal to 0 and solving for y. So that will lead us up here. 2y minus 6 is 4y minus 8. 
we move the 2i across this way and the 8 across that way, and we get 8 is 2y, or sorry, a negative 6 plus 8 is 2y, so 2 equals 2y and y equals 1. Double check when y is 1, we get a negative 4 over negative 4, which is indeed 1. So that is our solution with our single non-permissible value. Now, 1d, 3 over x minus 5 is 10 over 5x minus 25. Here I am going to recognize that the right-hand side can be factored as 5 times x minus 5, which means these can be simplified to 2. So this is 3 over x minus 5 is 2 over x minus 5. Now, x is not equal to 5 is our non-permissible value. If we multiply either side by x minus 5, those factors get wiped out. We are left with 3 equals 2, which is never true. So this is a rational expression that has no solution. So if we were to graph 3 over x minus 5 and 10 over 5x minus 25, they have the same asymptotes, but at no point do they actually intersect. The red line, when the numbers are positive, is always strictly greater than the blue, and strictly less than when the numbers are negative. So this is a case where we have no solution. close that, but we just didn't need to use it. So now, question two, we want to define a variable and write a rational expression to describe each situation. So we don't have to solve it, we just have to set it up. So first, the time it takes to travel 15 kilometers when the speed has been decreased by 5 kilometers an hour. So in this case, I'm going to take the speed as our variable, because when we're decreasing it, we only have the relative values. So, generally speaking, the time it takes to travel a given distance is distance over velocity. That is the formula as it's used in physics. So I'm going to say the time it takes here, our rational expression, is the 15 kilometers divided by the speed which has been decreased by 5 kilometers an hour. And v had better not be 5 because if you decrease it by 5 kilometers an hour when you start at 5 that means you're going 0 kilometers an hour and it does take an infinite amount of time to get there because you're not actually moving. Now, our second topic, our second problem, the unit cost when the total cost is 4,000 and the number of items has increased by 5. So the unit cost is the total price divided by the number of items. We are told that our total cost, or total price, is 4,000. And the number of items has been increased by 5. Negative 5 would be our non-permissible value, which we don't really have to worry about because you're probably not going to order negative 5 things. That's when you're getting 5 things refunded and returned that you never actually got in the first place. Or part C, the speed of a car that traveled 50 kilometers an hour in twice the time. So the speed of a car is distance over time. It traveled 50 kilometers in twice the time. So this will reduce 
to 25 over t where the units are understood or specified in the text. And again, t is not equal to zero is our non-permissible value, which makes sense because we are looking at traveling at finite speeds and not teleportation. That would be an issue and violate relativity. Part D, a fraction of a job completed by Shannon in one minute if it takes her five minutes longer than Brad to complete the job. So we need one total job divided by the time it takes Shannon and Brad to do it. So Shannon's time, right? So T is the, the time is gonna be the job divided by the rate. And we need to know the fraction of the job completed by Shannon in one minute so how much of the job is done? So that's going to be the time times the rate. And it takes her five minutes longer than Brad to complete the job. So Shannon's normal rate is one job divided by how much time it takes Brad plus five. We want to know how much of the job she gets done in one minute. So our T is one. Our rate is 1 over Brad, Brad's time plus 5. So the job is 1 over B plus 5, where Brad cannot finish the job in negative 5 minutes, which is reasonable. It's probably going to take him a positive amount of time to finish whatever job this is. So those are the solutions for parts one or questions 1 and 2. Question three, determine the non-permissible values of the variable in each part of question two, then state the restrictions on the variable. The non-permissible values we were doing along the way, because that's just the way we should always be doing it. The other restrictions, things like Brad should always have a positive number, we were discussing but hadn't finalized. And for the most part in these problems, we just have to add that our variables should always be positive. In this case, because we are reducing it by five, our initial speed had better be greater than five. Strictly greater, not greater than or equal to. So that's just a minor addition to solve question three. Question four, our x equals three and x equals negative two roots of the following equation, explain how you know. Well, if these are roots, then when you plug in x on the left-hand side, you're going to get the same value on the right-hand side and vice versa. So one way to do that is by pure substitution. So if we have two over x, equals x minus 1 over 3. We are testing it for x equals 3. In that case, the left-hand side is 2 over 3. And the right-hand side is 3 minus 1 over 3, which is 2 over 3. So the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. That one checks out. Now in the case where x equals negative 2, with our left-hand side, we have 2 over negative 2, which is negative 1. And our right-hand side, we have a negative 2 minus 1 over 3, which is a negative 3 over 3, which is that same negative 1. This one also checks out. Yes, they are both roots. And we know because when we substitute, the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. This concludes our discussion of this homework assignment.